Are you sitting at home and want to make a cool looking music video in a few hours while maintaining social distance? Of course you do. And if you do, then keep watching. Happy New Year everyone. This is my first video of the year and in this video I'm going to be showing you one way to make a cool looking music video for nothing. As long as you have a half decent camera, a black sheet and some editing software. Between Christmas and New Year I made a video for the song A Thousand Things which is part of a film a few friends and myself are working on. It's called 2020 Rendezvous. If you want more information about that there's a link above and in the description. In this video I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro, but any techniques I do here can be easily translated to other platforms such as Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, which is free by the way. There are chapters in the description for all the different sections, but here's an overview of what I'm going to be showing you in this video. First we'll look at the raw footage and discuss how it was filmed, then I'll create a multicam sequence and sync all of the different takes. Next we'll put the multicam sequence in a new sequence for editing and I'll add black bars for the film look. I'll show you how I'd white balance and crop shots in the multicam, how you would treat and colour the final video, how the quick horror movie like cuts are edited, how you could overlay shots with each other, and at the final stage I'll add some artificial grain and tweak the final colouring. So let's dive in. You push the limits of my tolerance Maybe find myself that way the footage itself was quite simple. I filmed myself against a black sheet playing the acoustic part, the bass part, and some of the electric guitar parts. There were two takes of each except the bass, which I knew I wouldn't be featuring much. To be honest, my mime of that wasn't very good as I couldn't remember what I played on the original, but it was good enough to cut in the odd shot at key moments. I chose to use my Canon Legria HFG40 over my more SLR looking options as the autofocus is really good which was essential for some of these shots but mainly because it has a Wi-Fi remote control and with a little bit of JavaScript on my PC I was able to get the camera to zoom in and out slowly by itself. Although I only ended up using this on the guitar shots, to keep some consistency and to also use the autofocus I stuck with the same camera for my face in the mirror shots. I filmed myself singing the song while looking in a mirror. I was going to clean the mirror but after a bout of genuine laziness I decided to see what it would look like without a clean and to be fair it looked pretty cool with the dirt on it. Maybe more luck than judgement with that one but who knows. I sat on the floor with the mirror on a guitar stand and you can see the same black sheet in the reflection behind me and I took four takes of myself singing the song in the mirror. The first was kind of a warm up and the next three were taken at different zoom levels. Chris and his wife set up a black sheet in their bedroom and using her Canon SLR camera, Jenna filmed Chris at three different zoom levels, playing along to the song and of course singing in the choruses. I wouldn't say there's anything spectacular about any of these shots, but it's cool enough to make a great video. The first thing you'd want to do with multiple takes like this is to put them in a multicam sequence. Basically, you can stack each take on top of each other, starting at the same point, so they all sync up. The easiest way to do this is to load a clip into your source monitor, find the start position roughly, and then move along one frame at a time until you find the first pulse of the music. With this song, there's a definite start, but on other songs you may have to sync using the first beat of the chorus, where that's the first sharp sound, Basically, you're looking for the first sharp sound in the song. Each song may require its own syncing method, but as long as you can sync to the same place in every take, it'll work out just fine. Premiere does have an auto sync function, which is great in a lot of cases. But with something as simple as this, I'll show you how to sync the old school way. So I need to create a new sequence. My footage is 1080p, HD, 25 frames per second. So I'll choose this preset, but I also want to make sure that the maximum bit depth is selected. Maximum bit depth allows a lot more colour depth, which helps keep the colour quality when you're doing heavy colour processing, which we're going to do. That's a whole other video, so to keep this simple, just turn on maximum bit depth for anything more serious than just a quick blog or a screen capture video. I need to drag the audio file of the song into the timeline, and I also need to find the first beat of the song, which is the first frame in this case. But sometimes your sync point might be further into the timeline. I move the song forward by five frames to give myself a little bit of pre-roll. Load your first clip into the monitor window and you'd find the first beat of the song and mark the in point. 
you set an out point and then you drag the video, not the audio, just the video, to the timeline, starting at frame five, the first hit in the music. And then you just repeat the process for each take. It's really that simple. Once you have all your shots lined up, you can go through each one and white balance or color correct them. Here's a shot of my Blue Flower Telecaster, which has a bit of white paper under a clear scratch plate. So I can use that to check my white balance. You can use the Lumetri color panel to do a great job with color correction. And the Lumetri scopes can tell you if you're crushing the colors too much. To white balance a shot, click on the eyedropper and click on something white in the image. This is the simplest way to white balance a shot. With Chris's takes, I use the white pickup cover on his guitar. At this stage, you can also adjust the black and white levels, the highlights and shadows, the exposure and the contrast if you want. But the aim at this stage is not to make every shot look cool, not just yet anyway, but to make every shot look even. So if you cut from one to the other, they don't look like totally different cameras, unless of course that's what you're going for. Once all that's done, you can create a new sequence from your multicam sequence, rename it to edit, and you're almost ready to edit. You need to right click the footage and enable multicam, otherwise you'll just see the topmost layer of the multicam. There are two ways to change a shot. You can right click and select the camera you want, or you can click the multicam icon and view all of the shots. In my experience, there's the right time for both. So it's useful to remember what is on each track if you can, or have it written down next to you for reference. I've had edits with over 50 cameras and just loading the screen to choose a shot can take a while. And if you know that that shot's only between two or three different cameras because it's a guitar solo and you want to show the guitarist, then it's often easier just to audition each camera manually rather than switch to the multicam view. I have a simple PNG file that has the black bars that I want for the film look. You can find them easily on the internet, but I'll add a link to the ones that I like to use in the description below. Dragging this to the timeline above the footage will add the black bars and will also allow me to move the footage up or down a little. This is called reframing. Coloring the footage to taste is easy. You can add an adjustment layer above the footage, but below the black bars, and then using the Lumetri color panel again, you can do whatever you want and it will only affect the layers below it. In this video, the first thing I want to do is to turn saturation right down. This will make the footage black and white. Now I'm gonna adjust the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the black and white levels, being careful not to crush the colors. And as you can see here, the black colors are just getting a little bit crushed and that's evident on both the picture and the scopes. You can go full screen and check your footage at any time. Uh, the keyboard combination for me is control and back tick, but it may be different on a Mac or on your PC. I recommend having a minimum of two monitors for editing, but for the purposes of this video, it's all happening on one screen. So moving on to the creative section, I'm gonna load in the cine space look, which really adds contrast. So I'm actually gonna go back to the basic correction, turn down the contrast a little and push the exposure a bit. Back to the creative section, I can add in some blues, turquoise into the shadows, and I can up the tint balance. In the curve section, I can add a slight S curve to add more contrast if needed. In the color match section, I turned up the shadows and the mids. And finally, I added a little vignette to the whole thing. All of these settings can be tweaked as I go, and of course, that's bound to happen. But this is a good enough start. Now on to the masking. The black sheet in the shots of Chris only cover part of the background, so we need to create a mask around the area that we want to keep. Select the video you want to mask and then select the pen tool in the opacity effect and make points around the part that you want to keep. If it's easier, you can mark around the area that you want to remove and then invert the mask. But for this example, I'm marking around the bit that's staying. When you switch back to your edit sequence, you can see that the mask has worked, but it's left transparency where there used to be a bit of video. This can be solved by adding a black video as the lowest layer in the sequence. Now onto the edit. The defining thing in my video is the flickering cuts. First thing to do is to find the point I want to cut to a new camera. Using Ctrl and K on my PC or Apple K on a Mac, you can cut the video. And then using the left and right arrows, I'm gonna go back one or two frames and make several cuts, repeating that a few times. 
You can select a few of these pieces of video and change the camera and now it flickers before it settles on the shot. That's the basic principle. You can also switch on the multicam view and go through each cut using the up and down arrow keys, choosing the camera you want. Either way, the look of the cut is achieved by flickering between multiple takes quickly. For the choruses and end section, I overlaid some shots with each other. I copied the section of video I wanted to have an overlay to the track above, and in this case, I want a shot of me and Chris. I changed the upper layer to one of Chris's takes, and then I used the motion panel to move it into place. Another thing I did was to overlay a third shot and blend it using the soft light opacity setting. This allows the light of the acoustic to light the layers underneath, which just adds a little bit more of flickery confusion. At the end I wanted some words to appear, so I wrote some bits of lyrics on my iPad in the notes and I exported them as PNG files. I also had my friend Sammy send me some words too. I wanted these words to flicker with the cuts at the end, so I dragged them into the timeline, inverted them, blended them using the lighting option in opacity, and then added a Gaussian blur. After cutting the layer at the same cut points as the video footage, I used the motion controls to change the position of each chunk of text. At the final stage I added some artificial grain. This doesn't always show up that well on YouTube as the compression algorithms tend to blur it out a little, even in 4K. But I find that adding grain helps to prevent the colours crushing too much and of course it does look cool. One way to do this will be to just add some noise to the adjustment layer before the Lumetri colour, but this is very processor intensive so I've got a few seconds of pre-made noise rendered to a file that I can just overlay, I can nest them and then blend in using the opacity settings to taste. The noise really brings back a lot of the definition that was lost in the artistic colouring without losing the cool look that we've achieved. And because we ticked maximum bit depth, our colour dynamic range is much wider between processing stages, hence we ticked it. This really does need a video of its own and I'm scared to use any quick analogy in case the YouTube police come after me in the comments, so I'll just leave that for another day. So I hope you found this interesting. For those that want to watch it, you can find the final video by clicking the link in the description or the one that should appear above. Please like, subscribe and leave me a comment. If you like the song, then please check out what we're doing with our film project over at 2020rendezvous.com. And if you're watching this way in the future, hopefully the film's been finished and it's good. And fingers crossed there were no bizarre gardening accidents. Thank you for watching. See you again.